Damn it, Chris, an LVAD is not a death sentence. It is a temporary measure to keep you stable. I tell you that as your doctor, it is the best decision. And I would not say that if I had any doubts whatsoever that it will help you to get through this transplant. A new heart is not a given. The worse your condition gets, the higher you move on the list. That's the system. Just shut up and let the system work the way it's supposed to. It's my life. It's my decision. Is he awake? Yeah. Is he all right? I'm good, Mom. Is he really? What is it? What's wrong? No, they we're just uh, talking about Chris's options. What options? What options are you talking about? Chris is refusing a treatment that will help him survive. Maybe you can talk some sense into it. Christopher, is that true? Uh, it's, it's complicated. Not really. John wants to install an LVAD. It's a mechanical device that will help his pump if it becomes weak. Like a pacemaker? Well, sort of, but it's a, it's a temporary thing, you see. It's not permanent. It's simply to keep him from going into cardiac arrest until we can find a new heart for him, but he isn't refusing to have the surgery. I can't lie here while you and Katie watch me disintegrate for, for days, weeks, maybe longer. I, I don't want to be remembered like that. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop thinking about being remembered. Think about living. Unless I get a new heart. You're going to get a new heart. Of course you're going to get a new heart. Now listen to your father, listen to John. They know best. You know what, Chris? If you don't want to fight for yourself, you're going to fight for your parents, all right? No parent should suffer the loss of a child. Chris? You want to know what I think? How dare you sacrifice yourself for me? You think I can't handle you being a little sick? Is that how little faith you have in me? No. Of course I have faith in you. You don't want me and your parents to watch you die. That's what you said, right? So how is dying sooner going to make it any easier? We haven't had very much time together. Don't you want that? Yeah, of course I want that. Then listen to your doctor. Pick one. These three men are the best at what they do. You know that. I know. I know that, but the judgment is clouded right now. Why? Because they don't want you to give up? You think if you were just some stranger off the street, they wouldn't care? That's not true. Katie. You don't understand. Yes, I do. I understand just as much as anyone in this room, and I think what you're doing is the furthest thing from noble. I think it's cruel and cowardly. You're not near sick enough to give up fighting. It's my heart. My heart is giving out. And John and Bob and Reed are doing everything they can to get you a new one. You need to do your part and hold on until that happens. Okay. That might not happen. So we'll deal with it then. Please, please, just at least try. I need you. Jacob needs you. And I don't care if you have wires hanging out of your chest for the next year. At least you'll be here with us. <sighs> Just wait. When the time is right, you will get the heart that was meant for you. Okay? And then John will fix you. And in the meantime, we'll spend that time just getting to know everything we can about each other. Nobody who loves you wants to be spared. You've already been through too much. And I haven't given up. I can handle it. I can handle all of this, okay? Let me. I want us to start our life together. So you're stuck with me. I'm gonna sit here at your bedside and beat you at cards and make you watch ballroom dancing shows until you understand why I love them so much. And when you get your new heart and you're all healthy, we're gonna take tango lessons and we're gonna go out dancing with Barbara and Henry. 
I'm not gonna get any friends with your money. We have so many memories still to make together. And you're gonna wanna be there for them because it is going to be an incredible, meaningful, beautiful life. I mean, so uh, is Chris gonna make it? I don't know, Casey, he's really sick. Kim and Bob, how's Katie dealing with it? She wasn't at the hospital when I was there. She does know, right? Yeah, yeah, Reed told her everything. He said she's really torn up. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay. Okay, I'll go for the bionic heart after all. Good choice. Thank you. Thank Katie. She reminded me there's something worth fighting for. She's gonna need you to help her through this. Does that make you jealous? No, not at all. It would be selfish of me to keep you all to myself. But I promise you we will tango rings around them. Tom? Where are you? Well, he's stable right now, but I don't know for how long. What have you heard about that heart in Bay City? That was very good, Katie. I should hire you to try to talk some sense into my most stubborn patient. I don't even know what I said. Well, what you said was perfect for all of us. Actually, I could not have said that better myself. I am so proud of you. Bob, where did Bob go? Hey, listen, there's a heart. Careful, Bubbles, Bubbles. You can manhandle them once the new heart is installed, okay? The new heart. I'm gonna miss the old one. How could I help but fall in love with it? But Dad, where did the heart come from? Bay City. I don't know very much except they ran a tissue match and it's perfect. When's the heart gonna get here? Well, the harvest team is working right now. They have a helicopter standing by. And once they're done, they're going to airlift it right here to the hospital. Reed. Oh, hey, I was just going to text you. Chris got a heart. It's on its way from base. Chris, <laughs> I told you it was going to be OK. Well, well, can I Can I go see him? Oh, yeah, the whole family's in there. What's two more? You want to come? Yeah. Okay. I can't believe Chris got a heart so quickly. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing, too. I'm not sure how long he would have lasted without it. Maybe if he hadn't been so stupid about admitting that he was sick. Oh, come on, Reed. Even you and your infinite power must admit that you're a little bit happy for Chris. This is incredible. Yeah. You have no idea. We're not out of the woods yet. This is a very serious surgery. Honey, I know. But don't be Dr. Bob. Be my husband. Let's just enjoy our miracle. <laughs> I'm so happy for you both. Oh, honey. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to be good. It's gonna be fine now. <laughs> Didn't know you drank coffee this late in the day. Well, I wanted to give the family some time together, and uh, I want to be with Katie while Chris is going through surgery, so it looks like it's gonna be a really long night. I think Katie came back here because of you. Well, what can I say? You married a wonderful guy. Oh, looks like things are turning out better. Yeah, well, it ain't over till that fat nurse over in pediatrics sings. He doesn't look too happy. No, he's probably just coordinating the transplant team. Yes, no. I can hear you now. Yes, well, I'm out of the room. So what did you say to me before? No, it, it's slower, slower. We've got a bad connection or something. Go ahead. I just received a call from the cardio team at Bay City General. You're a perfect match, by the way. 
But some young surgeon over there who they made head of cardiology has taken the heart for one of his own patients.